Hi, I'm David Recca with Haggerty in our DIY series. You might remember this 289 Hypo build and our Redline Rebuild series. And this baby is running beautifully. We got a Holly carburetor and point ignition. But today what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this to the engine dyno and we're gonna see what type of numbers it lays down so we can make a comparison to when we install a Holly Sniper EFI system on it and replace this carburetor. So this EFI installation is going to go on our Ford 289, but keep in mind, what really is required here is a four barrel intake manifold. And if you don't have a four barrel and you only have a two barrel, there's a two barrel sniper as well. Now, don't be intimidated by the pieces. It's very basic. The throttle body that will replace our carburetor. We have to add an O2 sensor, the mash of wires, and our user interface. So this throttle body requires 50 pounds of pressure. Our mechanical pump is only going to supply seven. We had to purchase this extra kit that allows us to put in an electric fuel pump that will supply that 50 pounds. First thing I'm going to start with is by looking through this instruction manual. They do a nice job of laying out what needs to happen. This is pretty straightforward. I'm bolt the carburetor, bolt this down. The electrical piece might be a little intimidating. However, in the back of this is a very easy setup. Now, what I did is I've walked through all the wires that are on here and what my system actually requires. What it boils down to, to keep this simple on the engine dyno, we're not going to have an electric fan to control, we're not going to control the timing, and we're not going to turn on and off an air conditioning pump. We're also not using a crank trigger or a CDI box. I need this main harness, and I've walked through and labeled the five wires that I need to connect. Key on, I need a coil wire, something to trigger the fuel pump, of course battery power, and a main ground. That's it. Everything else is plug and play directly into this unit. There is no external computer, it's all housed right here. Now before we get started with the EFI installation, we're going to take this carbureted engine over to the engine dyno and get some base performance numbers. Electronic fuel injection will provide improve reliability, and certainly improve efficiency. That efficiency can translate into more power. Now the question truly is, how much more power? So this morning we drove down to Apex Competition Engines, and John's gonna help us with the engine dyno. When we put the carbureted engine onto the dyno, uh, the main issue we had was when we did the first dyno sweep, uh, the engine would not go past 4,500 RPM. It would break up. What we found out was the points were floating or bouncing at 4,500. So we were at the limitations of a point distributor. At that point, we swapped in a MSD magnetic pickup distributor and that cured the problem because it does not rely on a mechanical function. It is an electrical function at that point. It's a little odd here in the torque curve and the same kind of a dip further on in the horsepower, but uh, 313 on torque, 282 on horse, not horrible, but I think that's a pretty good baseline for our carburetor, not bad. We're back from the engine dyno. Our numbers look pretty nice. Now let's get the carburetor off and see what the EFI does for us. So the objective of this exercise is to get a baseline for our Hypo 289 Redline build with a carburetor and points distributor. Now, at the same time, we want to see if there's any performance gains with the Sniper EFI to illustrate how simple fuel injection systems have become and to do that, we're going to do it on the test stand opposed to in a vehicle so it can be seen easily. All right, let's get this air cleaner out of the way. Oh, my throttle stand out. Let's get this fuel line out of here. All right, so fuel line's out of the way. Let's get this vacuum line out here. Now the four bolts. Right. 
Now, speaking with the Holly Tech, this dual plane intake manifold is going to give me an issue with the EFI because it's going to want to surge. And what that means is a carburetor wants a pulse to pull fuel through the carburetor. The EFI doesn't care, but what it needs is a big volume so it fuels both sides of the engine at the same time. That's where this spacer is going to come in. Now, if hood clearance is an issue and this spacer is not going to allow the air cleaner to sit below your hood, then what you can do is you can take, cut this divider down about an inch and that will provide that open area that the, that the fuel injection needs. Now obviously you're not going to do that on the engine and get metal shavings down into the intake. So what you, you would do is pull this intake manifold off, cut it out, and put it back on. Now obviously these studs are not going to be long enough, so I had to go down to the auto parts store and grab some longer studs. Off the back of the throttle body, we have two ports. First, the biggest one is, is for positive crankcase ventilation. And the second one I'm going to use for my um, vacuum advance on the distributor. On the carburetor, it was up off the side. It's the same signal over here. We need to add the fuel inlet and a return line back to the tank. This has an internal pressure regulator, so we don't need to add any external regulator. An O2 sensor connection. This is for the, this is actually is not used. This is for the main harness. And this is for the user interface. And this one is also not used. So you just place an electric pump into your fuel line with the filters. Tighten this down. If your current fuel system does not have a return turn line, you will need to add a return line to your tank. Now since the throttle body utilizes that electric fuel pump for more pressure, this mechanical pump can go away. And to do that, you're going to take these two bolts out, completely remove it, eliminate, this, the, eliminate the line going up to the carburetor and of course the one to, the, to your fuel tank. Once this is off, you utilize a block off plate to put in there and seals the oil from coming out of the timing cover. For our purposes, we're going to take our inlet hose and connect it to our outlet hose and completely bypass the mechanical pump. So Holly provides an O2 sensor with the kit, and they say that the placement of that is 1 to 10 inches from the collection point of the exhaust. So roughly our collection point is right here. 1 to 10 inches actually is the length of the collector. I'm going to split the difference and put it right about in the middle here. All right. So let's put our hole in here. Do you want any slow mo? In the past, you would need to remove the exhaust header and then weld a bung into this position for your O2 sensor to thread into. Holly's come up with this pretty unique idea of putting this seal on here and then using T-clamps to hold this on, completely eliminating the need to weld. So this is super simple. Gasket, plate, two of these clamps, boom, you can do this right in your driveway and never take this header off or weld. Just, just before it's tight, make sure it lines up nice and smooth to that hole. I got one connection underneath to the test stand for key on. So there's a fuse box underneath here that I'm connecting the key on wire, similar to what you'll do in your car. So now for power source to the unit. I'm going to grab my battery power off the inlet side of the starter solenoid. Mm -hmm. 
So on this test stand and in the vehicle, obviously I'm gonna make sure I don't have any wires laying against the exhaust and in the way of any rotating parts. Just run my power leads over to the coil for the test stand. Put our coolant temp sensor in. And this last little two wire plug is for the temp sensor. All right, our EFI is completely installed. We get all the wiring in, we get it tucked away from any moving parts in the exhaust, and uh, our fuel lines are on. When we power this up, it's going to cycle the electric fuel pump. That'll give us a chance to check for any leaks and then we're gonna walk through the setup procedure within the uh, uh, EFI system. The first time you key on, the handheld is gonna pop up to the wizard. Now this wizard is what's used to establish the initial calibration in tune relative to your particular setup. Follow the detailed instructions that came in the kit. Now, if you lost those detailed instructions, they are available online at holly.com. How about them? Bananas. Man, it fired up like that. It searched around just a little bit for idle, and if you noticed, it didn't start learning until it hit about 160 degrees. Now at that point, in your vehicle, you would take, take it out on the road and run with it. Let it learn, it'll figure itself out, and it'll be happy. Now in our case, we're gonna take it to the engine dyno, we're gonna do some dyno pulls on it and see what kind of power it makes. We're back here at Apex Competition Engines. We have our engine on the dyno still. We put on the EFI and we've ironed out one little issue and that was with the aftermarket ignition had a tack sweep. Uh, so basically what it was saying is the, the, the EFI was seeing 9,000 RPM on the initial key on. Well, that was kind of freaking out the EFI and saying, holy cow, I gotta have a whole bunch of fuel. So it was flooding with the injectors. Uh, that problem is solved. So we're gonna warm this up to 160 degrees. That's when the EFI starts to learn. Now, different from being started up on an engine stand where there is no load, the dyno can put load to it and basically simulate driving down the road in your car. We're gonna do that, let it learn, kind of figure itself out, and we'll have some good solid numbers from the dyno. So now we can compare where the carburetor is at relative to the EFI. Carburetor, Carburetor fuel, fuel injection. So just shy of 300 horse and 329 foot pounds of torque. All right, so my initial reaction is yes! <laughs> but so we know, so I, I think this tells me two things. A, our torque being flat is good on the, on the carburetor. This is fine. This tells me maybe two things. One, it's, the carburetor's not quite big enough. So the, the EFI is gonna f naturally gonna flow more because it's technically bigger uh, as far as the butterflies in that are concerned. So you're gonna get a little more airflow in here. You can certainly throw more fuel at it. Um, and we're seeing that here too, as far as the uh, uh, air fuel ratio numbers, we're getting more fuel all the way through the curve. At the end of the day, this is smoother torque way smoother horsepower. I think it's a win power wise for the EFI. Now we've had a few struggles getting there, but try, in which all system, system type stuff. And, and some of it is just purely being on the, on the dyno relative into a car. You're not gonna have as much um, versatility in the car. It's gonna be what it is, all that type of stuff. 
You can't run the, the RPM sweep when it tack sweep when it fires up, that sure pukes the daylights out of it. But I think as a brief wrap up, it runs what a lot smoother. It starts instantly. Instant. I don't think it makes more than a half a revolution and it's running. So the great debate, carburetor versus EFI. Can the carburetor make more power or the same power as EFI? Absolutely. Can they both be as efficient? Absolutely not. The EFI is, in theory, constantly making adjustments to the fuel curve. It is continually learning. It is changing relative to the temperature and elevation environment. The carburetor does relative to what the engine demands, but it does not know what the incoming air temperature is and how that volumetric efficiency and all those things are going to occur within that engine. So my conclusion, the EFI is more reliable relative to consistent performance. It's also going to eliminate that cold start issue. I'm not fiddling with a choke, whether it's a manual or automatic. It's going to have improved efficiency relative to, let's just use uh, fuel economy as an example, meaning it's going to set that ideal fuel ratio all the time. So at the end of the day, cleaner performance in more like a modern daily driver car, then I think EFI is your bet. Now to wrap this up, I want to thank John at Apex Competition Engines for letting us chew up his day on the engine dyno. And lastly, please click and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. All right, our EFI is completely... He told me to go. It's not my fault.